Good evening, everyone, and welcome to. Yeah, please put yourself on mute. So tonight we are starting project management methodologies. Well, what is a project management methodologies? These are methods used to manage projects from beginning to end. Methodology ensures that project output are realized within the given timeline and budget. So in order to, to realize the aims and objective of our project, we choose a particular method to manage our project, deploy our project. The kind of um, problem we are trying to solve or the kind of problem we are uh, managing will determine the kind of approach or the kind of methodology we are going to use. In a situation we are solving a, like I keep on saying, complex project. We are deploying a complex project. We use methodologies like Agile because it's, it's, it's suitable for that kind of environment. If you are if we are managing a very simple or straightforward uh, project, we use um, waterfall. And if we are managing a project where we, we, we capitalize on realizing the value or more interested in the um, uh, realizing the, the cost, or the full benefits. So we, we, we look at Prince 2. And if we are trying to, to save, um, reduce waste, we, we tend to use lean. And if we are trying to um, embark on uh, mainly process improvement. We use Six Sigma. And Agile is a hybrid project management uh, approach. Actually, there is nothing like Agile, but people, it just we just created it. Because we find out that sometimes we have to combine some um, approaches in order to get best results. So just like now we are combining um, business analysis and project management to get the best results within uh, as we embark on this uh, IT journey. So it's going to give us more opportunities. So it's something like that. When we use a, a Wajai, we tend to have a good documentation within Agile environment. We have good documentation and still be flexible. So that's why you use a Agile methodology. So let's dive in into all this. Um, Agile is in the industry today, Agile is the uh, most popular, followed by waterfall. Waterfall is the traditional method of uh, project. That is the first 
project management uh, approach. We call it traditional method. So, but the, the truth is that is phasing away, is, is dying away, just like so many tra <coughs> traditional method of doing things are beginning to die away. So it's natural. Uh, waterfall is coming to the end of uh, its life. <clears throat> So it's, it's not only water for so many other traditional approach, even education, our traditional method of uh, teaching is dying away. These days, nobody wants to teach using blackboard and chalk. Those days are going. So, and uh, there is no, you can't come back. So, and Prince too, uh, project in control, control environment. This uh, project mainly is a, it started in UK and mainly they use it here in UK. So, but it's still, it used to be popular, but the popularity is going down due to agile, but they are trying to refurbish it by adding some agile approach within the print to making it a bit hybrid so lane uh, is mainly within manufacturing industries where they use it to reduce the cost of production so and they tend to six sigma is everywhere it's been there uh, and the company has been using it uh, for uh, process improvement and the rest of the continuous improvement. So let's dive in and uh, look at them one after the other. Prince 2 is a project in controlled environment. That's the full meaning of uh, Prince, Prince 2. And it emphasizes on dividing projects into manageable and controllable stages. The biggest advantages of uh, using print two is uh, is flexible. Yeah, as a generic methodology, print two can be applied to any project, regardless of uh, size, scale um location industry or sector and to understand this principle we'll look at the seven principle that uh, is the main pillar of a uh, prince too and one of them is a uh, continued business justification the business case is the most important document in Prince 2. And to ensure that that project is still viable. So you continue to weigh the cost and benefits. Uh, according to Prince 2, when you are managing a project, the, 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 the project must continue to be viable. You must continue to weigh the cost. When the cost, is outweighing the benefits, uh, Prince 2 is co considering that project not to be um, viable anymore. Even though you are still within your timeline and within your budget, but the benefit you are going to realize from that, that, that project is no longer um viable the pro the, the 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 project outcome is no longer viable prince to consider it uh not to be a good project so it's mainly stressing on costs and benefits so main focus is is cost benefits analysis <clears throat> Then another principle is learning from experience. 
Prince Tsu uh, emphasizes so much that uh, the best way is to learn from experience. And it, it, it um, centers so much, is so much interested in uh, documenting lessons, learn, learn, learn from projects, like lesson learn reports, and uh, log, keep on logging lesson learn, keep on having lesson learn um, a workshop and meeting and keep documenting the project the, the report so that it can there can be a, a, a reference point to look at um, the experience from the project uh, other people can always use that uh, project as a point of reference looking at the lesson learned so that's one thing that Prince Two is uh, very popular with. <clears throat> Prince Two defines rules and responsibilities. Rules are separate from individual who may take a multiple rule or share a rule. So in Prince Two, they, they talk about um, a uh, project manager, and we don't talk about who is so is mainly about role they are interested in. Other projects uh, approach are uh, just like um, agile is equally uh, interested in rules. Prince two manages project by stage. The project is planned and controlled on a stage by stage basis. Other projects does that as well, but Prince Two is quite outstanding in doing that. Prince Two manage by exception. A Prince Two project has defined tolerance for each project objective to establish limits of delegated authority. So Prince Two have a, a limitation on what uh, you can. Uh, Assign as a project manager in Prince Two, there are some things you cannot delegate. You must do it uh, as as a, as a best practice. There are some things you cannot be delegating to other project team members. You must have to do it. Um, that's their role in Prince Two. That's how Prince Two uh, manages by exception. Prince2 focuses on products. A Prince2 project focuses on the definition and delivery of the product. In particular, the quality requirement. It focuses on the quality requirement. The product must the, the pro, product of the project must be of high quality and always delivers value the value must always outweigh the cost for the project to be um, viable prince 2 is tailored to suit project environment so prince 2 can fit in any environment that's why we call it in controlled environment. No matter the environment, they tend to package a situation within Prince to, to fit in the environment. Whether the environment is, uh, is it a small project, you have a way to manage small project very well within Prince to. Is it a complex project? Prince to tend to um, manage projects a complex project Prince to have a way to manage it. These days, Prince to have uh, integrators almost everything in Agile to manage complex projects. So is it how important Prince to, Prince to can manage a project based on the, the importance of the project or the urgency, the, the time capability and the risk? So this is uh, why Prince 2 became so popular in the UK that uh, it became government adopted 
method of project management. Yeah, but Agile is now taking over because of, because of IT, the, the sources Agile recorded within IT industry. And everything we are doing these days is IT. So that's why Agile took over. But Prince 2 made a very big mark, you know, those days here in UK. There are so many companies, mainly government organizations and press starters and institutions, they still use Prince 2. Is um so many of them that are dropping Prince 2 or they are just starting to migrate from Prince 2 to others. So, so many other people, you just, what they are doing now is mainly migration. Even in my company, we are still migrating to Agile. So there has been um, Prince 2, Waterfall, and the rest of them. Uh, but there is serious movement towards Agile methodology. So we are not going to be focusing much on Prince 2. So this is a, a highlight of Prince 2. If you, if you want to, to specialize in Prince 2, get certification in Prince 2, then we have certification, you know, we have a Prince 2 foundation, we have Prince 2 practitioner, and the rest of them. So I wanted to have a, but I did a letter, they didn't have an interest again in Prince 2 when the everything started dropping and I abandoned where I wanted to get a, uh, foundation and the practitioner, but I didn't do it again. I, I switched to Agile. So, but if you're interested, you can you can um, research about that. But I'm not going to I'm not going to dwell so much in Prince too, because uh, I want to give us the best based on the time we have and. Uh, what the market demands. Market demands so much for Agile. So if you want to do, for me, I'm not saying that what you can do whatever you want, but for me, if you want to build more, I prefer you, you, you get more uh, knowledge or certification in Agile project like uh, um, Scrum master, product owners, um, and the rest of them who are coming to Agile. Agile is going to be the last we are going to treat. So we are welcome to waterfall approach. The waterfall methodology is a sequential development process that flows like a waterfall through all phases of the project from requirements to design from design to development and from development to testing and uh, later they added um, deployment and um, maintenance so that is uh, how it keeps flowing. So it's requirements, design, the, um, development, testing, deployment, and maintenance. You cannot jump um, design. You can't jump from requirement to development. You must finish design. You can't start development without finishing design and you cannot um, start testing without totally finishing development and you cannot start deploying without 
finishing testing. And you cannot uh, start uh, maintenance without fully deploying the whole project. That is how waterfall is very rigid because of this uh, nature. So, and the, the back or uh, the, the disadvantage of this approach, while it's not popular, is that when you are developing a project, the, the stakeholders, or the, the end users don't get a feel of how the, the product is going to look like until finally when you finish developing the, the, the project and then deploy the project. That's when they are going to see how it looks like. And it might, when they see the project, the, the, the final outcome, the end users might not like it and it becomes a problem. So, so you, if there is need to make changes, then it means you have to redo the whole process. Again, you have to start from requirements. The changes have to require from the requirements and then down to design again. Just like if you are fixing anything, you have to fix everything within, you have to fix everything and then do it again. This is a long process and it's very, very costly and is very, it's not cost effective, it's so rigid and companies don't want it, you know? So that's why it becomes unpopular, more especially in software, industry but it still have its own benefits because we have been using it before other methodologies started coming so let's look at the benefits of this waterfall developers can identify design error during analysis and the design stage helping them to avoid writing faulty code during the implementation so, but still, that is within development environment. That is developers because they can detect that within the uh, development environment, but not the users will not still have the a test of what they are being paid for till after it is deployed. The total cost and timeline of the project can be accurately after the requirement have been defined. So when the requirement comes out, then you should be able to know the total cost is going to uh, take you to deploy that particular project. You, you need to know, that's the one good thing about it. You know, because you finish the whole design everything and not do design and like after design and analysis you do your costing you know how much is going from the requirements you know how much is going to cost but in agile you cannot know how much is going to cost because agile is so flexible agile boils so down so much on customers um, want so when custom when you have finished planning and customers' um, taste changes, then there is need to tweak um, the product towards the customer. Or uh, when the market changes, agile flows with the market. When the product is getting out of um, becoming obsolete, you are developing a project, a product which is becoming obsolete and you need to improve to catch up with the market trend. That is going to cost more money. So you don't actually know the cost of uh, your project as pay within an agile environment because it's flexible, it can change anytime. But in waterfall, you know from the beginning, you finish your design. 
With the structured approach in waterfall, it is easier to measure progress according to clearly defined milestone. So because everything is uh, defined, everything is structured, everything is well planned, so you can know your, your progress. Developers who join the project in progress can easily get up to speed because everything they need to know should be in the requirement document. Everything is well planned. So if you are joining within the testing, you will always just join and get the documentation and you know what you, what you need to do because you cannot start the project until the whole project is designed and documented. So once you, you lay your hands on the project document, you know what is going on. So that's one problem. Is is the in the uh, waterfall they over plan. There is so much planning. They will keep planning and planning and planning, and even before they, they deploy the project, they are planning. You find out the project is no longer even viable. It's no, it's becoming becoming obsolete because they are trying to get everything right. So, customers are not always adding new requirement to the project and they're delaying production so they don't take once the project is planned they don't take any requirements from the customers anymore so and it helps in timeline you know your timeline so once it's six months if you use a um, agile uh, waterfall to apply to, to plan your project so it's very likely you are going to if you manage your project very well you are it's very likely you are going to deploy the project within six months. If you try very much to avoid um, taking requirements from anybody, which is uh, the way of a uh, waterfall, then nothing stops you from deploying the project within the uh, required timeline. The diverse uh, disadvantages of uh, this uh, approach is that um, it can take longer to deliver uh, than with an iterative one. Iterative, iterative means uh, smaller unit, like a waterfall, because uh, I mean like agile. Agile develop in small, small pieces. So they keep on developing before you know it within two weeks agile have produced a small piece of software and, and uh, deploy it so before you know it is find out that if you are trying to start a business that has um, um 20 features a software that have 20 features with agile you can just start with two features and then you continue to develop other features and keep adding them. But in waterfall, you must develop that 20 features before you can roll out your business. So you find out that your competitor who is developing a similar product using waterfall. Is already in the market and they're capturing the market. By the time you are coming into the market, the person with two features might have uh, taken over 90% of the market uh, value and customers. And because they relate with their customers, they do review, see what customers want. It will be very difficult that when you bring out your own 20 features, Nobody is going to talk to you. So that is a disadvantage of uh, waterfall. So 
There is no room for requests for change and new features um, to be added later in the process in Aja in the waterfall. When one phase in the process is delayed, all the phases are delayed. So these are the disadvantages of um, waterfall and these disadvantages are very severe. So that is um, all we have for waterfall approach. If you have any question, I can take question before we keep rolling. Okay. So, sorry, I just want to. Can I go yeah, ahead? Yeah, I'm listening. I just want to ask question on uh, the certification thing you made mention of. So, uh, considering PMP and uh, uh, Scrum Master certification, which one would you recommend, or uh, or how do you think one can place it on uh, on a career trajectory? Like I said. PMP is very good. They are all, um, it boils down on general. Uh, they teach you, they don't teach you on a, on, a, on a waterfall. They don't base on water. They teach you general project management. So you tend to learn about general project management, like the best approach to manage our projects, and uh, the way you manage stakeholders, the way you plan their requirement, the way you track your project, these are the things. So if you, if you are getting it just like uh, knowing about project management, they don't narrow, they are not going to teach you waterfall. They're going to teach you project management generally. And that's what you are writing on there. But agile, agile certification tend to professionalize you in agile environment. You know, you, they, you, you drill down in whichever area you want to be in agile. So either you want to be a, a, a scrum master, agile coach, or you want to be a product owner. So you, you see that you, you is more drilled to the what you want to be. It give you more knowledge in, technically in a, a unit area of agile methodology. I'm not going to say do this, or I'm not going to recommend anyone. But what I'm saying is that me, I'm an agile evangelist. I'm not going to tell you take this one, and, but for me, like I said, I was pursuing um, uh, certification with uh, Prince Two, both Prince Two uh, Foundation and Practitioner. But along the line, I switched to Agile and get certification in uh, as a Scrum Master. I got, I got certification in Product Owner. And I even tend to get another certification as an agile coach. That is my own preference. So you, you are now, I'm not, you are now exposed to the industry. It's left for you to choose whatever you want. But for me, I'm choosing agile for myself. Is that okay? That, that's fine. Thanks so much. All right. So um, let me chip in one more thing. Another good area to get a certification, if you have, if you want to, 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 to get certification, is um, 
Six Sigma. Six Sigma, if we have um, so many belts, white belts, yellow belts, green belts, and black belts. So if you manage to get a black belt in Six Sigma, work will be looking for you, not you looking for work. Because it gives you so much relevance in the industry. It helps you to solve practical pro pro problem within the industry. You solve problem. Just like, uh, and C Sigma equally combine um, lean. So it mainly their certification, they call it lean Six Sigma. So if you can get certification there, there's is a very hot area, you know. So, but agile too is very good. So these are the my own preference based on the market analysis. So let's look at um, lean. Lean is a strategy for achieving significant improvement in performance through the continuous elimination of all waste, wasted resources. In Lean, the main approach, the main drive is to, to, to eliminate waste. There are two ways to increase organizational resources to increase um, revenue is not only by increasing sales, bringing more customers. You can actually increase revenue by reducing the cost of production. Yeah. One good example of lane is um, so many of us have uh, been to hotels so many these days, both everywhere, both in Nigeria, in everywhere. If you are lodging in a hotel and uh, you want to order food, maybe you are in your, in your hotel room and you place order for food, they will tell you, give them like 30 minutes to prepare food. Because so many of us we think that uh, is, uh, they are trying to be posh. Yeah, they want to serve your food fresh, you know? And they even charge you a, a lot of money for doing that, you're thinking, because you, they want to uh, you know, serve you your food fresh. It's, that is not the goal. It's not because they want to serve you your food fresh. The approach there is to eliminate waste. All of us know that food is something that once you cook food and you put food in freezer and you warm it, you keep on reducing the taste. So, and when you cook food and wait for customers, Customers might know at the end of the day, you might cook um, uh, 100 plates of food for 100 customers. And at the end of the day, you, uh, 30 customers might just turn off. And then 70 plates will become a waste. So, now you see how much you wasted, wasted resources. But if you have applied lane, that when a customer place order, you cook. When a customer place order, you cook. If 30 customer places order, you cook 30 plates. If 100 customer places order, you, you cook. Uh, what that approach the hotel is using is called lane. That's lean approach to managing their resources. And you find that it becomes so effective, you know, 
because those days you find out that so such big big hotels even people will always go in the evening to, to pack wasted food people that uh, that people didn't uh, they didn't sell and you find out that so many of those hotels before you know it they will liquidate they will close down because of uh, wrong management of their resources you know they keep cooking free food for people and they are not into um charity they are there to make business they are not there to, to give people free food they are there to make money they are not making profits and they are even losing their 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 their, their, their capital so, so that's why lane is now the best approach within uh, restaurant industry even all this uh, food delivery system you see that if you place order they will process their food and now it's applying everywhere even in um they are applying lane even in um, in boutique in the in the textile industry and the boutique like uh, fashion and design these days if you place order of uh, order for for clothes because most in delivery is now taking over if you place order they will go and cut the clothes and design it and sew it and send to you that's what they do these days you know if you place order for furniture they will tell you that more special here in the uk if you place order for furniture you see the furniture online and you place order they will tell you that it's going to take uh, two weeks for them to deliver your furniture at all the time of the um ordering for that furniture there is no furniture in the in the warehouse they will go and buy the materials and make your furniture and you find out there is no room for first paying for goods uh, paying for warehouse where they pack raw materials there is no need for that again there is no need that they have uh, made the furniture and the furniture is no longer um, it, the furniture is now out of fashion there's no need for that or that you you make a cloth and over time the cloth is no, now out of fashion and nobody is going to buy it so this is what lean does they've used lean to revitalize a lot of companies so we, we, and lean is always um, goes together with uh, six sigma and that's why this uh, six sigma i'm talking about lean is mainly lean six sigma that's why it's very very hot in the industry and to to apply lean the first thing is to map out the value stream when you map out the value stream the second is to identify the waste within the process and then you eliminate the waste within the process, then produce value to the customer and drive organizational change. So that's how Lean is being um, uh, uh, done. So Lean, Six Sigma Lean is out of this group. It's just on the surface we are going to deal with it if you want to do six sigma is a very big um uh, is an mba course on its own you know so but it's good you have knowledge of this as you don't know it that will not stop you from getting a job as a project manager because even in the industry they look at those who uh, are senior project managers that goes for 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 courses in a six sigma because you need to have even worked have some knowledge of the industry in order to to understand the the level of uh, analysis within um 
Lean Six Sigma uh, courses and certification. But that is an MBA class on its own. Then Six Sigma aims to improve process, reduce waste. Like I said, is a combination more is is a combination of lean, reduce waste, and the error, increase customer satisfaction through and <clears throat> throughout an organization. Six Sigma is based on the Mike project methodology, five phases. What do you mean the mic? The mic is the approach, the framework in uh, C Sigma. D is for define, M is for measure, A is for analyze, I is for improve, and C is for control. So when you try to use a lane to manage a project, the first thing you do is to define the system. Defining the system is to understand the cost of the, the voice of the customer and their requirements and the project go. So you have to listen to the customers, understand their goal, their problems. Then you measure key aspects of the current process. So when you understand them, the customers, you listen to them, they have understand their voice, their problem statement, then you measure the current process, the way they are doing things that is causing problem. You measure it. The way you measure it is you map it out through process mapping, call it ACs. Then you analyze the data to investigate and clarify the cause and the effects. You do data analysis. You do data analysis. Do data analysis means you do root cause analysis. Root cause analysis to find out the root cause of the effects or the defects under investigation. When you find out the, the root cause, the next thing is to eliminate those uh, defects. To eliminate it, you improve on the process. So improve or optimize the current process based on data analysis. And then you control the, 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 the improve or the value added. You control the future state process to ensure that any deviation from the target are corrected before the result to any more defect. So you continue to manage. So that is how we uh, use Six Sigma. You know, so that is a Six Sigma for, for you. It's good you have a good uh, picture of how Six Sigma work. So once you have good knowledge of uh, project management, you are trying to build your career to become a senior project manager, then it's time you start looking at uh, understanding Six Sigma better. But if you tend to pursue it now with no knowledge of project management, Yes, I'm not saying you cannot do it, but in life, we climb ladder, take a step one after the other. So do you have any, any question within what we've done? Okay. Okay, let's um, crack on. 
And then now we are into the almighty agile methodology. The agile methodology manages a project by breaking it up into several phases. It involves constant collaboration with stakeholders and continuously improve on every stage. Project team cycle through a process of planning, executing and evaluating, continuously collaborating is vital both with teams and project stakeholders. We continue to, to collaborate with your project team and stakeholders to, to, to manage the project. The collaboration is on daily basis. As a project team, when you start deploying your project within the sprint environment, then you continue to collaborate on daily basis. That will help to re reduce the chances of project running into risk. Because every day you spend 15 minutes as a team to ask, what are you doing? Uh, what did you do yesterday? Are you having any challenges? When you keep asking such questions on a daily basis, you find out that it will be very difficult for a problem to arise and uh, not being able to control because you people collaborate every day to look at problem. So let's look at um, Agile Manifesto. Agile Manifesto have four main values. The manifesto says that the best way to manage a project is for individuals and interaction. Individ people, project um, team members to interact more. So you call it individual and interaction over process and the uh, tools. All these processes and tools, uh, tracking, they are good. But who drives the process? Who uses the tools? They are people. So these people that uses the tools and process, let them do more of interaction, work more like a team, not uh, using a big, big, uh, uh, sophisticated uh, tools or high level approach or process. So let people collaborate more. Let people talk about their, their requirement. Let people talk more about their problem in a project than you are trying to, to use um, um, big, big tools to solve one problem. You are using Power BI, you are using the DevOps, you are using, no, all those things are good. But first, build a team, a team bond, team bonding. So, and I encourage you people as a class to collaborate more. Don't just uh, come and log in and log out and go. Use this avenue of this uh, program to make new friends. That will help you more. Because what we are what we are doing now, you are, you are you are in a project, you are managing a project, and the project you are managing is your career project. When you build a, a, a team, a team, a team management, um, a bonding uh, within this class is going to help you more. Try to understand people that have more knowledge. Try to collaborate. Don't just wait for me alone to come and sort your problem out. Yeah, yeah, it's good. But you find out that some, some people within this team 
will equally help you even getting the job. Some of them might have connections that you are looking for to get a job. Some, some people here are, are just here to, to get knowledge. They already have job. Some even have companies. So if in, a, in a, a group like this, you try to build, collaborate more, and you find out that it's going to work. Don't just rely on this tool that you use Zoom. You come, you come and log in using Zoom. You listen, you go, or you talk to Charles, or you log into Course Porter. All these things are tools. But Agile say collaborate with your team members. And everybody in this project are your team members. Some of you who want to, to come to UK, some of us in this class are UK based. You talk to them, that's collaboration. You make friends, you know? And that is how you, 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 you build up and skill in your project. So the second Agile Manifesto says that working software is more important than comprehensive documentation. And this is what they use to kill waterfall. Waterfall will continue to document and document and document and plan comprehensive plan, high level plan, sophisticated plan, high level documentation, beautiful documentation. By the time they finish this documentation, the project they are trying to deploy is already in the markets. Agile people have already started selling that product in the market. And waterfall people are still documenting. And at the end of the day, the documentation might not even work. So you collaborate more to produce a working document than use high level uh, process and documentation to develop a software that is not working, you know? So if, if nobody cares about uh, Facebook's documentation, I've never even read Facebook documentation, you know? You hardly see, have you, any of you seen Facebook manual on how to? Nobody, but everybody using Facebook because it's working. It's a very sophisticated, software but at times you see a software you see a a big documentation or you buy one tv uh, or tv you see the kind of uh, manual big big manual all this uh, analog television and the rest when you buy that that kind of tv you see the kind of manual like a big textbook you read well, some of all these, all those uh, big, big, uh, big uh, um, technologies with all those uh, big, big documentation. Before you know it, they will, they will become obsolete. People will not use it. People will not even understand how to use it because the documentation is complex. So make software more user friendly. Forget about documentation. Let people, that's why these days, the, 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 the companies are working more of developing a more user-friendly um, software. Like if you see our cost portal, we try as much as we can to make it look very simple so that you'll be able to find what you are looking for so easily. But you will see some, some websites, they will use JavaScript to mess everything up. Everything within the, the website will be laughing, everything will be talking, everything will be shaking, everything will be flying. All those things doesn't make sense. Let the, the, the interface be simple and let people be, the main thing that people can solve their problems, get what they are looking for.
Another manifesto is that customer collaboration over contract negotiation. You, co you collaborate with customer. Who are the customers? We talk about customers here, we talk about more of the clients. You, they, they are the stake, you collaborate with them. When you are working with them, you collaborate with them more to understand their problem than just uh, negotiating for contracts. Conventional way of contract, you're writing uh, very long contract. Collaborate with your customers. That's what Agile is saying. So when you, 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 you collaborate with your customers, more like friendly collaboration, it's better than all this conventional way of uh, uh, contract negotiation. Let it not just be so official, so bureaucratic. Agile um, Fourth Manifesto says that responding to change is better than flowing a plan. Then uh, you see that you see in uh, in waterfall they will um, plan 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 after planning they will follow that plan re religiously. Even when there is a need to ch for change, no, they don't want to look at that change. We have a plan. When you are telling them it's no longer working that way, they will tell, you, but that is not the plan. So Agile is saying that you should respond to change because we are living in the um, IT industry is fast changing. We are living in a very fast changing economy, very, very fast changing environment. And you should be quick to react to changes in order to, to, to compete very well within the market. But when you keep following plan, 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 by the time you keep following your plan, you find out that uh, you've been left behind. This is what we are learning from uh, Agile. So Agile is based on Scrum, Scrum framework which is for developing, delivering, and sustaining product in a complex environment. Design for team of 10 or fewer people. They don't want crowd. Agile do not want crowd in their, so it's either 10, well, once, well, once it's uh, more than 10, they feel that uh, too many hands spoil the soup. They don't want distraction. They just want few people to concentrate and deliver working software. They don't want so many plans. They don't want uh, uh, you get uh, this and that. Just few people to deliver the product and that's it. So you at times you in waterfall, you 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 come. You don't even know half of the people within the project you are working with. I've been in a site, you don't know who is who in that project. A lot of people in that project, you don't know who is who. Too many people. How do you collaborate? How do you collaborate in such an environment? It's not possible. And such projects, they keep on failing. But when they are like you know, seven people, eight people, or nine people managing a project, you people can sit in round table and plan your project and be working and delivering your project and be talking, you know, can even do a, a Zoom class where you people are, can on, talk to each other. That's how um, agile, but if, for instance, you are managing a project and you want to have a virtual, um, meeting and you have uh, you have uh, hundred people in that project how do you how how will that meeting be effective it's not possible 
how can everybody talk? How we won't even know who is who. So we we'll end up not achieving much. <clears throat> so that's why we want fewer people in um, agile project management, just like maximum of 10 people. Scrum team consists of product owner, a scrum master, and developer. Developers are the programmers, business analysts, and the, um, the testers. They are the people that makes the developer or the development team. It used to be called development team, but it's now called developers. So as like I encourage you people, I don't know if some of you have started downloading the, the Scrum guide and started in it. I think they have um, um, this uh, audio Scrum guide as well. So if you are finding it difficult to 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 download it, like that's what of well, some of my uh, class um some of my students here in UK what they are doing so many of them they will just uh, download it because they are busy as well going to work they will download the uh, the audio scrum guide and they'll just be plug it into their ear while they are in the train and they'll be listening while they are in the bus they'll be listening and they find out before you know it they'll finish reading it so you can, whichever one, find a way to get it and either read it or listen to it. So, Scrum team consists of product owner, a Scrum master, developers. The team is self-managing, cross-functional, and focuses on one objective at a time. And that is the product go. Scrum workflow is based on sprint, a repeatable fixed time boss during which a done, a done product of the highest value is created. So that's why I'm saying you, you have to download this uh, Scrum guide. Because all this uh, technical, scrum technical jargon I'm using here might not be understanding what I'm saying. Was the sprint media scrum um, agile meditating in such a way that once you enter there, you are in agile world, call it agile environment. They start speaking their own language. You start hearing time box. You start hearing sprint. You start hearing a uh, definition of done. You start hearing self-managing, self-organizing, cross-functional, daily scrum, retrospective. All these things are scrum um, agile language. So if you if you get that scrum guide, they took their, their time to explain all these terminologies one by one. But I'll try as much as I can to explain them here for you. So, Scrum workflow is based on sprint. Sprint is a duration, is a time period where you develop a piece of a piece of software within two weeks to to one month. That's what we call sprint. Within this period of time, you plan and develop a feature or a piece of software that you add in the whole product. Like if you are trying to develop um, a Facebook Reel, Facebook Reel is that a, a small video you add in Facebook. Everybody, all of us use Facebook. That small video you can just uh, add. That feature was developed not quite long ago. So if you want to develop that feature and, and uh, the way you do it is you plan it within two weeks. Within these two weeks, 
we call it sprint. You work with your team within the two weeks to develop it and deploy it and fix it in the whole Facebook. So that is what we call sprint. Is between two weeks. Some do it in one week. I don't know. But the most acceptable is two weeks, between two weeks to one month. Once it's more than one month, then you are no longer doing Scrum. You are doing something else. So you, it's a repeatable fixed time boss during which a definition of done. Done means that it's done. You've reached all the requirements. You've met the requirement, and then you've you finish. That means done. And then you produce the possible highest value. You must within this two weeks. You must produce something. You cannot uh, after two weeks you come out and say that you couldn't produce it. You must do whatever you need to do to pro. And that's why Scrum is very effective. Because within every, let's say every month, if you are if you start a project with agile, it means that every month you must produce something, something tangible, which is valuable to the to the business, which customers can use. It doesn't matter how you do it. You the team is their business, but you must produce something. And if you are trying to, to deploy a project within six months using waterfall, you find out that by the end of the six months, the agile, the waterfall people will deploy their, pro, their, their project. The people using agile must have produced six features. Every, every month they are producing six, and they will keep customers very, very happy, keep them engaged, keep them busy. Keep them excited. Oh, another feature has come out. If you go to this product, oh, another feature. And that is what the market wants. They are getting value every month. Scrum is wrapped up in, in events like daily Scrum, Scrum review, uh, sprint retrospective, and the uh, spread planning. So all these events are things you need to observe within Scrum. Daily Scrum is daily stand-up. Every day you spend 15 min minutes within the team, the development team. They spend 15 minutes every, every day to, to collaborate. Because you find out that if such a thing doesn't happen, you find out that some days, even weeks, some people will not talk to each other. They are busy trying to work on one. But this gives you the opportunity for at least you people to talk. Scrum review is that at the end of that two weeks, you must come out to show the stakeholders what you have done. You must come out to show the value. Even if you like, you should start playing around. But at the end of the one month, which is the spread, you come and show what you are doing. If at the end of the month, and you people can produce anything, and you say you are working in, in an agile environment, all of you should get, be get sacked because you are not doing anything. Then sprint retrospective. Retrospective is that you people need to um, come together after you develop something to show what, um, to, to look at where you people have been having problem, what went wrong and what didn't go well, and then plan a way to manage it and forge ahead. So that is um, agile methodology. That's how it works. Then, We look at, um, let's look at them one after the other. The Agile Scrum rules. Rules in Agile Scrum, because in Agile we have 
product owner who have Scrum Master and Development Team, which is called developers. The development team are the people that do the work. At first glance, you may think the development team means engineers. But that is not always the case. According to the Scrum Guide, development team can be comprised of all kinds of people, including engineers, writers, and programmers. Looking at this um, diagram, we see the development, the self-organization, designers, development, um, UX designers, testers, delivery, even the um, uh, process owners um, or, or business analysts, they can be part of the development team. So when we talk about developers in Agile, we're not only talking about the programmers. The programmers, yeah, can be part of it, but others still are part of the, the development team or let's call them developers. <clears throat> Then the agile product owner. The product owner should not only understand the customer, but also have a vision for the value the Scrum team is delivering to the customer. The product owner also balances the need of the stakeholder in the organization. You look at what the customers want and what the um, organization want, and then you balance them to bring out a value for the customer and bring out value <clears throat> for the organization. It's more of a strategic role in driving values for the organization. The business is represented by the product owner. So the product owner represents the business. Who tells the development team what is important to deliver? As a product owner, you tell them what to do, what to deliver, what is, valu what the, is valuable <clears throat> to the customers and the stakeholders. Trust between those two rules are crucial. There must be big trust. It must have uh, the developers must have uh, trust on their on their on their um, product owner, and product owner must equally trust the people working for him to deliver or her to deliver value to the stakeholder. So the the product owner is like a bridge. The stakeholders and customers talk to the, the product owner and the product owner convey the, the value or the information to the developer into in, in form of backlog. And then the, the developers then produce value. And then the, the, the product owner will go back to the, to the stakeholders or the customers to deliver the value. It is the responsibility of the product owner to ensure that they are delivering the most value. And it's the duty of the, the product owner to cancel a pro, an ongoing project. Even the stakeholders does not have right to cancel a project. If the, 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 the stakeholders want to cancel a product, they must first talk to the, the, stake, the product owner for the product owner to declare that the product is canceled. And the, the, the product owner have right to cancel an ongoing project when he feels that the project is no longer delivering the value. The 
Agile Scrum Master. Sorry, I omitted the picture. The Scrum Master is a servant leader, which not only describes a supportive style of leadership, but also describe what they do on a day day-to-day basis. The Scrum Master is the role responsible for gluing everything together and ensuring that Scrum is being done well. Your duty is to make sure that the Scrum environment, there is high level of decorum. In practical terms, that means that they help the product owner define value, the, the development team to deliver the value and the Scrum team to get uh, the Scrum team to get to get uh, to get better. So the 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 Scrum master is more like a coach. Is a coach. He coaches both because a Scrum master is being regarded as a, a, somebody who knows the Scrum principle very well. So you are there more like a coach. You coach everybody to abide by the rules of this, the, the, the Scrum. Because you find out that Scrum is not that easy. Some people find it difficult to, to practice all the Scrum principle, to follow all the Scrum principle. But as a, as a scrum master, you make sure that they follow the scrum principle to get the, the real value of using scrum. The scrum master focuses on transparency. Inspect and adapt is important that the right people can see what is going on. So trans, that is transparency. You should always inspect and you should always adapt. How do we inspect and adapt? You inspect and adapt by having meetings every day. You inspect and adapt by uh, through sprint demo. And during that, the stakeholders inspect what you do and then adapt what you guys are doing. And that is transparency in Scrum. And uh, Scrum, be, uh, Scrum believes in empiricism. Empiricism means that the best way of planning is to work and to learn from it. When you are working, you are learning. So Spring gives you um, opportunity to bring out your initiative. In Sprint, you try things out. You don't just do things um, that is, this is the way it's planned. Sprint gives you the, the, the courage to try out new things, be, to, to, uh, to, to explore your creativity. And that's why it's self-organizing. Nobody manages you, tells you what to do in screen because everybody, they trust you. So you, you, you do what you think is the best in Scrum. And that is uh, empiricism. Learning, uh, working and learning from uh, uh, your mistakes. Scrum Master focuses on self-organizing. So you, you teach the development team to step outside their comfort zone and try different things and uh, work on their own. And you, 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 you give them that sense of uh, maturity and sense of trust that they can, they can do it, they can bring value. Sprint, uh, Scrum Master focuses in 
bringing out values. Scrum defines values as a courage, focus, commitment, respect, and openness. And this is the value that the Scrum Master drives. So all these things are what the Scrum Master tries to establish in Scrum environment while the team are working, making sure that all these things come out. And this is um, the Agile Scrum rule as it is. This is the, the map. This is the, the, the Agile Scrum architecture. So, like here, <clears throat> This is the business owner. And this is the end users. Uh, they can equally call them the, the customers and the domain mat um, subject matter expert, call it domain expert as well. And this is the developers or development team. And this is the scrum master. And this is the product, uh, product owner who more of, uh, more of uh, is more of like um, a midfielder here. Yeah. So, and this is the, the scrum master who serves more like a referee, making sure that it's disciplined. So this is how it works. is how Agile Scrum work. This is the picture. So, and Agile Scrum, this, the, the, the product owner creates a backlog. You collect requirements from the customers or from the, the stakeholder, you document them into a backlog. This is um, a sample of a backlog, how it looks like. The product backlog is a prioritized list of work for the development team that is derived from the roadmap and its requirements. The most important items are shown at the top of the product backlog so that the team knows what to deliver first. So like, as you can see here, in this backlog, we have one, two, three, four to 19. If the development team want to work on this backlog, they have to start from number one, number two, because those people, those backlog on top are the most important. They are the most valuable. So you have to start delivering the most, the most values, highest value first, before you start coming down. The development team does not work through the backlog at the product owner space. Just like uh, we said, nobody controls anybody in Scrum. You don't control the product. Uh, development team you don't take them do this uh, you work you must work on this all you can do is prioritize them for them to see that the, this is the, the the highest value this is the second highest value and then they take, you cannot tell them come and take this or do this you just prioritize them and leave them to do their work because they know that this is what to do and you don't tell them uh please you need to work this, you have to be fast. No, all you know is that at the end of two weeks or one month, they must deliver something. It's when at the end of that week that they don't deliver anything. Although you'll be working with them to see that they deliver, that's when they consider to be a failure or there is a reason. 
why they couldn't do that. There could be maybe a pandemic, something like that. But outside that, at the end of a sprint, they must deliver something. So they cannot be uh, prompted to work on anybody's pace. Instead, the development team pull work from the backlog within their own capacity. This is another sample of a product backlog. Here you see the task, you see the story, you see the sprint they belong to, you see the dev, you see the priority, the status, story point, release number, and acceptance criteria. So in this um, in this uh, course is uh, not um, within the scope of this course for us to be uh, writing user stories and acceptance criteria. It's within the business analysis module that is covered. It's not uh, within this uh, scope. So we're not going to be talking about um, user stories and acceptance card. That is uh, the work of a business analyst, not the work of a project manager, although it's done within Agile. <clears throat> so this is another... <clears throat> Another product backlog. It can equally be called to do and estimation and prioritization. You can see how a user story looks like, which a backlog is a collection of user stories. As a user, I want to be able to reset my password. As a user, I want to edit item. As a user, I want to export data. As an administrator, I want to add I want to define KPIs for my sales team. And that's how we write um, uh, user stories, which makes up the product backlog. And then we have um, sprint backlog. The sprint backlog is the set of items that a cross-functional product team selected from the product backlog to work on during the upcoming sprint. Typically, the team will agree on the items during the sprint planning session. Okay, let's come back to user um, this backlog and see how we, we get a sprint backlog. This is a product backlog. If you want to develop or work on sprint within two weeks, we come here from this one that is on top, we can decide how much we can work on within two weeks. If our capacity is that we can only work on this one, we take one. If we, we can work on two items, we take two items. We can work on three, we take three. For instance, we decided that within two weeks, we should be able to work on this uh, reset password, edit item, and the spot data. We collect these three items and take it out of this product backlog. When we take it out of this product backlog, automatically it becomes a sprint backlog, no longer product backlog because it now belongs to sprint. That is sprint backlog. And when we come here, we do more prioritization and we start working on them. And you can see this is a 14 day sprint um 14 days sprint 
starting that you see one, two, three, day one to day 14, and that is when they sprint. So it's within 14 days that all these things can be done. So, and you see on day one, this is uh, what they be able to do day two, day three, and that is how they work on all this. This is the user stories. This is the task they perform. This is owner who is working on who, who is completed and this. And that is um, how we do this. And we'll continue to work till we finish and then we'll deploy. We test and deploy. So this is the process of agile process, how we really do this work in an um, agile environment. This is the product owner. The pro, this is the stakeholders and the cost of the, the, this, the product owner layers with the stakeholders to generate this uh, product backlogs. This is product backlog. And from the product backlog, this is the development team. Development team, they pick items here and they bring it into sprint planning. And they plan here, this is where they are doing the sprint planning, the team for cars work needed to achieve the sprint goal. This is what they are planning. The topic is for cars and they plan the work. That is the stage. And once they pick those, uh, the items they need to, to work on. After planning and selecting the item, the item they select now form the sprint backlog. And now they start working on the item. This is, they started picking and working. And then this is, they keep working. And as they are working within that, um, sprint within that 14 days they do daily screw this is them on daily basis where they are do their daily screw and within that process they still refine their requirements which is a product backlog requirement they they they, they carve out like one week one day or two days within the whole 14 days to do refinement They'll keep on refining this backlog. They'll make our time to come and look at back or help the product owner do some refinement. And they equally refine what they are doing here. So this is what they'll be doing within 14 days. And after 14 days, they are producing and they're collaborating and doing refinement. They should be able to produce this. Uh, increment this is piece of software they will uh, produce and when they produce this piece of software at the end of 14 days they bring that piece of software here or they invite the stakeholder where they show the stakeholders what they do under what we call sprint review or sprint demo they demo say what they've done and once they've done that everybody is happy they deploy that uh, small increment or that piece of software. They come back here as a team to have another meeting that after 14 days, we have been busy working. What didn't go well? What went well? Where do we need to improve? It's like um, a two hours meeting. So, and they'll have this meeting. And after having that meeting, they will come back here again to pick another item here to work on 
And that's how they keep on cycling and cycling and cycling. As a matter of fact, it doesn't have any end because they continue. That's why I say it's some complex products. They continue like now, the sprint, um, the, the team, the scrum team managing Facebook. Like Facebook, they keep on producing something as the, they are consuming this backlog. The product owner is going out to bring more requirement and add here. So all they keep doing is they keep working and deploying and the product owner will be feeling it. You know, it's like this tank never gets full. So they keep taking some water, the product owner will keep feeling it. So that's just the picture. Depends on the product, the, 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 some at times they, they, they might just finish the project and everybody will go. So. Then look at a sprint roadmap. Sprint roadmap is uh, what we tend to achieve within this uh, sprint, and that is the roadmap. So number one is I must have a vision, the product, the goal of the product, then features of the product. That's a um, product roadmap. Then timetable for product release. You must have planning. You must have timetable for releases. Plan for iteration of the product. That is sprint planning. Daily meeting on progress. That is daily scrum. Review of the created product. Sprint review. Feedback and lesson learned, that is sprint retrospective. So if you are planning a sprint, these are the sequential of things you need to do within this uh, 14 days or one month. And uh, this is um, Agile Scrum Guide in a nutshell, everything, all the stories about Agile, everything now documented in one sheet like this, call it a Agile Scrum Cheat Sheet. And in this cheat sheet, we have uh, Agile values. Agile values here is an uh, individual, like all these things that we'll be seeing. This is just a summary of everything we've been discussing. So it's an uh, individual, um and interaction over process and tools and this is customer um, working software over comprehensive documentation that is the four agile value i'm talking about customer collaboration over contract negotiation responding to change over following a plan then we come to 12 agile principle Satisfying the customer through early and continuous delivery of uh, value and solution. Welcome changes, changing requirements, even late in the development. Agile process harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. Deliver working solution frequently. Then working collaboratively is very important then build project around motivated individual give them the environment and support they need that is trust and the uh, support then face-to-face -face conversation is very important the most efficient and effective method of conveying information to and within development team is face to face. Working solution are primary measure of progress. Agile process promotes sustainable development. They sponsor the developers and the 
users should be able to maintain a constant peace uh, indefinitely. Continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. Simplicity, the art of maximizing amount of work done. The best architecture requires and the design emerges from self-organizing team. When the team are self-organizing, you give them opportunity to be creative, not directing them on what to do. At regular interval, the team reflect on how to become more effective. That is a collaborative, that is a retrospective lesson learned. Then we have four scrum rules. Scrum team, we have a product owner, we have development team, and we have scrum masters. We've already spoken about them. Then we have the sprint for a five scrum event. We have a sprint, a sprint, we've talked about sprint. We have a sprint planning. We've already talked about sprint planning. We have daily scrum. We've spoken about daily scrum. We have sprint review. We have sprint retrospective. So this is uh, everything you need to know about sprint. This is everything is here. You can come and uh, watch it again. And this is the agile project management artifact, and that is the product vision statement, the product roadmap, product backlog, release plan, sprint backlog, and the increment, constant increment. Most, a product must be receiving increments on regular basis, most more pieces of features on regular on two, two weeks, on one, one month. And then you have sprint backlog, have a release plan, you have product backlog, and you have product roadmap, and you have product vision. So that is um, the agile project management at facts. So yeah, I yeah, know it's not easy, but at least we managed to finish this class bit before two hours. So if you have any question, you can bring your question, you look at it before we finish. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are so many of us have left and gone to bed. So yeah. uh, that's okay. okay. So the, the, cert, the certification for Scrum, is it a separate one or is it covered under this one? Is a separate, the certification in Scrum is a separate, um, is a separate uh, we don't cover Scrum here, it's not covered in, um, in this, but everything we teach here can help you to pass Scrum. Because I once you read the Scrum guide, read the Scrum guide, and uh, with what we've covered here, there is not uh, yeah, much. The, the the question is just within what you we've just covered. So but that's why I'm saying you read the Scrum guide. So if you want to take the the certification exam. Um, you you go to scrum.org, you can register online, and um, you can take the exam online, and the certification doesn't expire. But you, another people that does Scrum certification, like a Scrum Alliance, you cannot take the exam online, you go to a center to write the exam. And their certification expires, I think, after two years. So that's why I encourage people to take um, 
to pick uh, scrum.org for a scrum alliance some of them they will just you just uh, they will train you anyways in scrum alliance they will train you and they give you exam and you pass and they give you certificate certificate you become certified you become a certified scrum master but after one year or two years, you can renew that to your certification or you expire. But one thing, one um, critics with them is that people are talking that once you give them that their money, at times they will even help you to pass the exam. I don't know, I've, I've not taken them. What I took is from ajascrum.org. You can even write it from your house. You don't get you know, the main thing is you read and pass. And the is a computer based this thing. So you log into the computer within the time, the hour, once the hour, the, the, the is time boss. I think is a one hour or something like that. Once the time expires and that's it. So you have to answer the equation within and then submit. So that's it. And it's achievable. So if anyway, if you want to write Scrum um, uh, from Scrum.org, then you can let me know. Maybe we'll talk more about that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Any more questions? Okay. So i wish you a good night rest everyone thank you for some of you that stayed back and for those who didn't stay back i know it's a long class but i just wanted to cover this project management uh, method methodology today yeah